A man was arrested on Mother's Day involving an incident with his mother. A former 911 dispatcher is indicted for sex crimes and Pikeville residents honored law enforcement with two special ceremonies. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on the news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. Police were called out to Elkhorn City after a man allegedly tried to break into his mother's home on Mother's Day. As troopers arrived on scene, they found 27-year-old Michael Anderson walking out of a camper near the home toward officers in an aggressive manner. Anderson ignored commands from police, pulling away from them while being detained. En route to the Pike County Detention Center, Anderson allegedly stated he would not go to jail like this next time and would carry a gun with him to kill himself or someone else. He faces multiple charges, including resisting arrest, terroristic threatening, and menacing. A Mingo County man is behind bars for allegedly breaking into a Pike County convenience store back in March. 33-year-old Matthew Colgrove of Raw is accused of forcibly entering the Speedway in Belfry on March 19th, taking nearly $1,500 in lottery tickets and more than $160 in cigarettes. Colgrove was arrested Monday and lodged in the Pike County Detention Center facing third-degree burglary. Two West Virginia men have been indicted in a Belfry robbery last month, which one of the men threw hot coffee on a store clerk. According to the indictment in Pike County, 20-year-old George Runyon Jr. and 22-year-old Justin Runyon, both of Del Barton, are charged with first-degree robbery. The robbery occurred on April 21st at the 7-Eleven in Belfry. Surveillance footage shows one of the men throwing coffee on the clerk, then both the men taking money from the cash register before fleeing. The use of force elevated the incident from what likely would have been a misdemeanor to one that now could include a significant prison sentence. The use of that coffee and the injuries caused to the clerk make this a first degree robbery which carries up to 20 years in prison. The theft itself, had it not involved uh, an injury or a threat to the clerk, would probably have been a misdemeanor with jail time only. So anytime force is used or force is threatened or a weapon is used in a theft, that quickly elevates it to the very serious crime of first degree robbery. And that's what we have here. I'd like to thank the members of the public that responded to the videos that were put out there by the police that helped them uh, identify the two people involved. Pike County Commonwealth's attorney Rick Bartley said the injuries suffered by the clerk do not appear to be lasting injuries. A man and a woman have been accused of child sex trafficking in Mingo County, according to a federal indictment that was unsealed Thursday. Misty Don Bateston and David Wayne Young have been charged with child sex trafficking, coercion or enticement of a female, sexual exploitation of children, and activities related to child pornography. The indictment lists two victims in the case, one who was under 18 at the time the activities allegedly took place and one who was under 14. The indictments accused Bateston and Young of knowingly enticing, providing, advertising, patronizing, and soliciting commercial sex acts with those minors. All of the crimes allegedly took place in March and April of this year at Del Barton. A former Johnson County 911 dispatcher was arrested for sex crimes. 30-year-old Michael Hamilton of Tudor Key was arrested early Thursday morning after being indicted by a grand jury on counts of prohibited use of an electronic communication system to procure or promote the use of a minor regarding sexual offenses and possession of matter which portrayed a sexual performance by a minor. According to deputies, the indictment is a result of a year-long investigation after receiving a complaint regarding a 15-year-old female. A West Virginia caregiver is facing charges after she allegedly beat an elderly blind man. West Virginia State Police were called to a home in the Omar community of Logan County after a report of the man being assaulted. Troopers say the man had lacerations and bruises on his face and a large amount of blood coming from his nose and his mouth. He said 45-year-old Tina Hatfield came into his home and said, and he quotes, would not live to see tomorrow, then started hitting him with some sort of object. 
The man was transported to Logan Regional Medical Center for treatment. State police searched the man's property and found Hatfield hiding in the cab of a truck. She's charged with malicious abuse of an incapacitated adult by a caregiver, resulting in bodily injury, malicious assault and fleeing on foot, and is currently being held in the Southwestern Regional Jail. Coming up, there have been some big changes in the Pike County school system. We'll tell you what they are. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with a look back at the week in weather. That's coming up next on This Week. Hi, I'm Anita Wilson, Pikeville Medical Center's Vice President for Surgery. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th, I want to thank our employees for their unsurpassed dedication to our patients. I'm Dr. Tim Wright. Quality health care would not be possible without the efforts of each and every employee. Thank you and happy hospital week. Mahindra wants to help you rise with the real workhorses. There's no limit to where you can go with the E-Max. Tackle even the biggest loads with the all-new Impact XTV. And tap into True Tractor with the Max. Make the smart choice. Mahindra, come rise with us. Rental Pro, the number one Mahindra dealer in Kentucky. Following is a paid advertisement. Have you been injured in a car wreck? You're unable to work and don't know what to do or where to turn. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, is ready to take your case. Call 606-369-1807. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, will come to your house and talk with you. He'll provide you with respectful and professional representation. Paul Howard Jr. will make sure you get the compensation you're entitled to. Located at 118 Caroline Avenue in Pikeville. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law. 606-369-1807. Commonwealth Pharmacy guarantees fast and friendly service with the availability of a convenient drive through Pharmacists Jody and Joanne Holland offer exceptional patient care and quality customer service. All insurance and compensation is accepted. Commonwealth Pharmacy is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 6 and Saturday from 9 till 2. Commonwealth Pharmacy, 606-437-0701 for all your prescription, over-the-counter, and preventative medicinal needs. Welcome back into this week. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins with a look back at your weekend weather. And it has been a summer like week across the region. Each day, a little more in the way of heat and humidity. We started the week at 82 degrees, waking up Monday morning with temperatures in the upper 50s. Sunny skies Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Look at the temperatures all the way to 87 degrees. We broke a record Tuesday, tied a record on Wednesday. Then we had a front approach and things started to change a little bit, a little more in the way of showers and thunderstorms on Thursday. And then by Friday, plenty of showers and storms leading to a lot of problems with flooding across parts of eastern Kentucky and western West Virginia. And here's why. Anywhere you see the yellow, that is at least one inch of rain. Then you can see some of the reds and the orange showing up. That's two to three inches of rain. And if you look closely here in central parts of Pike County, three to four inches of rain just Friday morning alone. We'll go in here a little closer and give you a better idea of how much rain some folks picked up. And it looks like the bullseye was right near Stone and McVeigh picking up more than four inches of rain Friday morning. That is your look back in weather. Sean, back to you. All right, thanks, Lathan. Friday's heavy rainfall brought with it some water-related problems, including problems for some who now have to leave their homes in Pikeville. Um, I was actually in the house, and I just heard stuff falling, and I just ran outside to see, and I was like, oh, there's a slide, and then came back out here, and the pop was all clogged up, and I got flooded again. Everything is gone on the bottom. Washer, dryer, computer, toys, TVs, everything. With this past week being National Police Week, Pikeville came to a stop Tuesday for a pair of ceremonies to pay tribute to those in blue, gray, and brown, as well as to honor those comrades who have fallen in the line of duty. This year's event took on a special significance as a grateful community said thank you to officers for maintaining security during last month's white supremacist and anti-fascist demonstrations. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele has a look. The Pikeville Police Department hosted the third annual Officer Appreciation Ceremony today at the East Kentucky Expo Center in Pikeville. The Pikeville Police Department was joined by Kentucky State Police, Commercial Vehicle Enforcement, the Pike County Sheriff's Office, the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, local officials, and state officials. 
we do what we do because of our community and we are afforded uh, the liberty to do what we do by our community. Um, they play a huge role in the decisions that we make. Uh, they also play a, a huge role in how we police. Organizers say events like this provide an opportunity for each department to come together as one. If you see some of the signs that were decorated on Main Street that were put up by not only the businesses, the city of Pikeville, one of those signs says to some this is a thin blue line, to others it's a family crest because truly we are one family. Immediately following the officer appreciation ceremony, the Pikeville Police Department hosted a fallen officer memorial at the Pike County Fallen Officers Memorial statue just outside the Pike County Courthouse. Loved ones as well as community members were able to lay roses by the statue in honor of those who have given their lives. It lets us all know that our heroes are not forgotten. I lost mine a long time ago. Um, and that's why it's so important to come back to things like this, and especially in our hometown where he worked, to know that the guys that come through here and do that job every day like he did, remember, remember him and his sacrifices and all of the men who have lost their lives and their sacrifices that they made. The ceremony is hosted each year during National Police Week. Reporting in Pikeville, I'm Shelby Steele for EKB News. When school starts back in Pike County this fall, the nurses who have been there for the past decade will be absent. EKB News reporter Chris Anderson has the details. For the past decade, the Pike County Health Department has provided nurses for each of the Pike County School District schools, but no more. Last week, the school district informed the health department they would not be renewing the contract for the school nurses, citing budget concerns for the 2017-18 school year. As for the nurses that worked in those schools, they lost their jobs. We were heartbroken, devastated when we heard the news. We've had this program over 10 years and love the program. Um, it's, it's wonderful for the kids, uh, the students. It's wonderful for the teachers, the principals. I think everybody benefits from the program. And um, it was just devastating when we heard the news. Over the past couple of years, the Pike County School District has contributed $350,000 annually toward the school nurse program. Superintendent Reed Atkins said the district was no longer able to do so. After discussion with several other districts and the models they use to provide health care in the schools to their students, I feel there's an opportunity to maximize taxpayers' dollars while still meeting the health care needs of our students. We expected uh, that they might have to reduce the contribution, um, but we, we didn't expect this to happen. And we understand the situation we're in because like you said, we're all, you know, everybody's feeling it. So we, we understand the situation we're in, and it's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate for everybody. There still remains, however, some hope that there will be nurses in the schools when classes resume in August. We realize the importance of this program, and we'll have a program in our schools for the students by the time they return in the fall. And we do have several uh, other health care providers that have serious interest in our nursing program. Superintendent Reed Adkins declined to name those interested in possibly picking up where the contract with the health department left off. The Pike County Health Department said the situation would not affect the school nurses in the Pikeville Independent School System. In Pikeville, Chris Anderson, EKB News. Coming up, Michaela Colley will be in with sports on this week. Hi, I'm Michelle Hagee. Vice President and Chief Financial Officer at Pikeville Medical Center. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, we ask you to join us May 7th through the 13th to recognize our outstanding employees. I'm Dr. Kevin Pugh. Pikeville Medical Center's employees not only offer professional skills to patients, but provide them with compassion and understanding. Thank you for all that you do and happy Hospital Week. Attention small business owners, Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes, you're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. 
This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-706-9477. That's 800-706-9477. There could be no show more appropriate to air on Memorial Day than our interview with Prestonsburg's John Rosenberg. Most of you know his contributions to civil rights and helping the underdog with his lifelong commitment to legal aid. But most of you don't know the whole story that starts with the Holocaust. Join me Memorial Day, Monday, May 29th at 6 and 10 for One on One with John Rosenberg. Kids from around the region continue to make their last minute decisions on where they will go next in their athletic careers. On Tuesday, the University of Pikeville baseball team's roster continues to grow as Shelby Valley's Seth Bailey made his decision to attend the University of Pikeville in front of friends and family. Seth signed his letter of intent to play for the Bears, who closed this past season with a record of 27 and 24 winning the most games since 2001. We caught up with Seth Bailey and Shelby Valley baseball coach Jordan Compton following the signing. Teachers, teachers are excellent. They've treated me good since the first day I've been here. And uh, I love this place. Coaching staff for sure. And how, especially how far they went this season. That really, really impressed me. Well, it's very awesome, especially for me. Oh, well, any time, I mean, any time that you get a kid signed to play college baseball, it's great for the kid, the young man, it's great for his family, it's great for the school, it's great for our young kids to be able to see, you know, you work hard, uh, it will pay off in the long run. On Wednesday, South Floyd's Blade Sloan also made his commitment to play baseball for the U-Pike Bears next season as he made it official from W.J. Turnerfield in Drift, Kentucky. He says he's excited for this next opportunity. And history was made at Belfry High School this past Thursday for the first time ever. Two Belfry High School students picked up a victory in the state tennis tournament. Nick McNamee and Wilson Harris won the first round of the boys' doubles tournament in Lexington, advancing to the round of 32 before falling to Henry Clay. After committing, decommitting, and recommitting, Jaron Williams has finally made his decision on officially becoming a Wildcat under head coach Mark Stoop. The ESPN 300 quarterback committed early to Kentucky, but back on April 24th, Williams decommitted after receiving an offer from Alabama. Williams tweeted earlier in the week that the relationships that he had with the Kentucky coaches were something that stood out and helped him make his decision, saying the relationships and the trust that I have built with the coaching staff, players, and all the support from the fan base is all too important. Kentucky now has three ESPN 300 commits, a quarterback, a defensive end, and an offensive lineman. It was a big week in sports this week, and of course we'll have more for you next week. Back to you, Sean. All right, thanks, Michaela. Coming up, we shine a spotlight on the newest member of the Kentucky Opry in this week's Mountain Music Feature. We'll be right back on This Week. Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Harris, Medical Director of Cardiology at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May the 7th through the 13th. We appreciate the nearly 3,300 employees who dedicate their lives to serving others. Hi, I'm Dr. Cody Reynolds. Everyone plays an important role in taking care of our patients at Pikeville Medical Center, from maintenance to housekeeping and nursing and beyond. Happy Hospital Week. By 2020, 56% of Kentucky jobs will require either a college certificate or a college degree. But only one in four public college students will graduate on time, and many may not finish at all. You can put the odds in your favor. Just earn 15 credits each semester, or 30 a year, to finish on time, and save money on tuition. Talk to your advisor and make a plan. Kentucky's colleges and universities agree. Take 15 to finish on time. Get in, get out, get going. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new Red Copper Cookware. The revolutionary pan made with nonstick ceramic and super strong copper. Guaranteed to stay scratch free for 
ever. It's lightweight yet super strong, so it won't scratch, peel, or chip into your food. Red Copper is a baking pan with a handle. It goes into the oven up to 500 degrees. And everything slides right out. Cook my healthy, crispy chicken fingers with little or no fat or oil. Chop steak and onion for a melty Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely no sticking. Or whisk eggs without a mixing bowl. Truly a time saver. Call now and receive my 10-inch Red Copper pan for just $19.99. Plus, get my recipe book free. Call now and you can double the offer and receive a second set. Plus, our new Forever Sharp Copper Knife. Just pay a separate fee. Razor sharp and food slides right off. An incredible value. Call now. Call 1-800-426-0848 to get your special offer Red Copper Pan. Call now or go to redcopperpan.com. So call 1-800-426-0848. Call now. There is a musical tradition here unlike anywhere else in America. During this week, we shine a light on part of that musical tradition. So now sit back, relax, and enjoy our mountain music. It's time now for Mountain Music, being brought to you by the Mountain Arts Center, the main stage of the Country Music Highway. Way down in the south, in the West Virginia hills, you'll find my home, where my house was built, where I'd go out just to run and play. On gospel with bluegrass roots, I guess you could say that I'm partial to that good old country sound that feels like home. And this is country to me, that's a climb and I walk the line. Wailing and Willie and Tammy Whitehead, Mrs. Dolly Parton and Donnie being one of the newest members of Billie Jean Osborne's Kentucky Opry, Rachel says she's excited for the upcoming season. I'm very excited. Um, I've heard the show is going to be great, and um, it's there's a lot more new things going to come, and so to be a part of that for the very first time is going to be so amazing. And as the Mountain Arts Center is just a great place to be and a great um, community to be a part of. Yeah, I like to reminisce. Sometimes inspiration for a good song comes from the classics. Country, and um, I just wrote it because I feel like country music and the traditional country music is fading, so I just wanted to bring back the, um, the country music feel, the classic, and, and what it's all about to me. Big hair and rhinestone suits, ballads and country blues, that's just what I believe. Sometimes life can change in the blink of an eye. That is certainly true for the subject of tonight's installment of Get to Know, but even more remarkable than the accident which nearly cost him his life is the way he responded to it became an inspiration for others. Tonight we get to know Joey Collins. Get to Know is brought to you by Dr. Tiffany Todd Duncan, DMD, located on Mall Road in South Williamson. Sometimes life can be hard. But when dealing with losing a limb, it can be a lot tougher. However, one Floyd County man doesn't let that obstacle bring him down. For him, he says it makes him stronger. They had given me a list of things I'll never do, which that list became goals that I'm going to basically do. 20 years ago, Joey Collins lost his arm to severe shock while working for Unisign Corporation in Pikeville. At one point, doctors didn't know if he would live. While Joey was recovering, doctors gave him a list of things he would never be able to do. Walking, driving, riding a motorcycle, and shooting a firearm were all included on the list. Joey, however, never let that slow him down. And then about a year after the accident, I went, purposely got a truck that was a five-speed on the floor and drove it to the house. Just to show them that I could do it and that I, was, I will do it. Driving wasn't the only thing Joey marked off his bucket list. He was able to do everything doctors said he couldn't, except for one thing. Tie my shoes. Joey credits his mom for his recovery and being alive today. To think about it, 20 years, those doctors 
which is ironic that his name happens to be John Hunt, said that I would not live that first week. And my mom stood on the Word of God and told them, where there's life, there's hope. She, I believe, is the one that literally prayed me right out of death. Now, Joey can even shoot a bow and arrow, which is one of his favorite things to do. He says a lot of people are inspired by his sport. I tried with a mouth tab at first, where you hold this thing in your mouth and push the bow out, and I didn't like it. And uh, started doing some searching on YouTube for videos, and one of my buddies on there had a video where he had lost his hand. But at the apparatus he was using, I thought, well, maybe I could incorporate that. A documentary was created inspired by Joey. You can watch on YouTube through High Voltage Archery. Reporting in Floyd County, I'm Shelby Still for EKB News. If you know someone who would be a good subject for Get to Know, send your suggestions to gettoknow at ekbtv.com. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at the week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on This Week. Hello, my name is Cheryl Hickman. I'm Vice President, Assistant to the President and CEO at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th. With the commitment and hard work of our employees, we have grown from a small local hospital to a regional referral center. Hi, I'm Dr. Judson Mel. I want to thank all of our PMC employees for always putting our patients first. Happy Hospital Week. Mahindra wants to help you rise with the real workhorses. There's no limit to where you can go with the Emax. Tackle even the biggest loads with the all-new Impact XTV. And tap into True Tractor with the Max. Make the smart choice. Mahindra, come rise with us. Rental Pro, the number one Mahindra dealer in Kentucky. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-876-6387, 800-876-6387. You want to feel connected, informed, included on every screen in your life. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text Washington, tell them local stations matter. Here are a couple of events coming up this week that you may be interested in. Enjoy a relaxing float down the Leviza Fork during the Leviza Fork Paddle Fest. Launch your watercraft at the boat ramp behind Billy Ray's restaurant in Prestonsburg on Saturday, May 27th, beginning at 8.30 a.m. Paddle up to the old water plant in Paintsville for a level one paddle. Lunch will be available in Paintsville, then the opportunity to be shuttled back to Prestonsburg for $10 per person. You can call Prestonsburg Tourism to reserve the meal and the shuttle at 606-886-1341. Also, watercraft rentals will be available the day of the event. In honor of the National Dam Safety Awareness Day, Dewey Lake Rangers will be guiding free tours of the intake structure at the Dewey Dam and providing water safety materials from noon until 2 p.m. Saturday, May 27th. This will be a great opportunity to learn about dams, the Corps of Engineers, and your local public lands. All tours will begin in the parking lot located at the top of the dam and are free of charge. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next week at 6 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.